back, everybody. Let's continue our talk about playoffs, Warriors and Pelicans. Yeah, let's go to the, the one that was kind of for sure. Uh, let's go to, I guess, the, the effect that Steph Curry had. What do you guys notice the difference between not having Steph and having Steph Curry back for the Warriors? Because it was been a long time waiting for him. Well, it's going to be hard to defend when you got a lot of players running around because with that Golden State system, it, they move a lot. And not even that, Seven Curry is a very underrated player when it comes to defense and uh, offensively uh, setting screens for other players. Uh, other of his players so and, and then it just gives you that would you would you want to roll you're going to leave a matchup when you can when Kevin Durant's going to roll inside the basket but you can leave Stephen Curry out for a three so it's 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 a lot of the defensive matchups for the Pelicans that they're they're unable to handle um but Drew Hall they he tried his best try to lock down Stephen Curry uh when it came back but you know it wasn't it wasn't enough for Pelicans man yeah mm -hmm. Golden State just too many weapons and just mm -hmm. Steph Curry back he he played like as if he wasn't Gone, right? He didn't miss and a beat. Yeah, he didn't. Nice. He didn't miss a beat. And mm -hmm. just seeing the highlights of just him shooting in Anthony Davis's face, and like anyone, mm -hmm. he didn't care. Like mm -hmm. it's just a testament to how good of a shooter he is, and he can just come back and just make an impact right away. Mm -hmm. I'm more excited about the next series, just seeing the two two uh, forces collide. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, uh, it's it's good to see Stephen Curry back. I guess it, it was good for him to. I guess warm up in a sense yeah, because he, he needed that to to get ready for you know yeah. Houston. And they play so different. Like if you guys notice the way they play without Curry, uh, it's if they play a traditional kind of player where they have a similar start to how Giannis, uh, Ben Simmons, uh, with a player like Durant who kind of runs the show. Uh, Draymond kind of helps mm -hmm. out a lot with that, playing that point forward. Uh, nowadays, a lot of teams are like that. They have a, a forward that can do the Bring playmaking the duty. Mm -hmm. But it opens up when Steph Curry comes into the game, just uh, the room in terms of the paint opens up so much because of the fact that he, the gravity that he takes in, uh, he can pull up from 30, he can pull up from the logo. And the fact that he could do that allows them to basically get one defender away from the basket. And that and if there's, you know, if they set their screens and they do their mismatches, they can easily go one-on-one -on -one and have no help in the paint because Curry all the way up here has a defender on him. And, and it helps a lot because during that series, actually, Drew Holiday was the one that was trying to stop Durant. So it was hard for them. Yeah. Like, who, who were they going to put in Clay? Who were they going to put in Curry? When they have, you know, their best defender, Drew Holiday, the perimeter defender, was trying to defend a player like Kevin Durant who can shoot over him many times. Mm -hmm. So they had a really hard time. The series, but everybody knew they was going to be a Warriors. Uh, it was good, impressive for the Pelicans to win one game. But everybody knew that it was too... It was, it was too a good warm up. Too much warm. They just play so a lot differently when Steph Curry's there because he's not just a good shooter. He's a good uh, dribble. He's a good uh, has handles, playmaking. So he does a lot of things. And like you mentioned, underrated in defense. And he's a great pick, uh, pick and roll player. If you set him Durant, something he sets the pick for Durant, and that's yeah. a scary matchup because once he set that pick, the switch they have to switch because Curry pops yeah. and then you have the, like, a smaller player in Durant and it just like it makes the game so much easier for players like Durant play uh, Draymond once Curry's on the floor right mm -hmm. I guess what's what's what do you think is next for the Pelican and the Pelican side what do you think they should do moving forward because they had a great first round series against uh, the Blazers they clearly are a good team if they just surrounded Davis Drew with the right type of players what should they do with the player like they have technically DeMarcus Cousins who's gonna mm -hmm. be a free agent yeah. Uh, I'd say try to try to keep him. I think during the regular season they were playing very well with 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 him. So I mean it's 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 gonna obviously step back Anthony Davis a little bit, step back his load more. Um, so you, you have Boogie Cousins helping out. Uh, Reza Rondo is actually gonna help up as well. Drew Holiday is helping out. So and it's that less that less of a load for Anthony Davis can help out. You know increase more production for the team. Um, they could probably sign one or two players off the bench. Um, you know, helping out the scoring and defensively, just just to keep that mindset of you know, keep passing the ball around as well. So mm -hmm. I never know with Pelicans. I'm not. I don't really follow the Pelicans, so I'm mm -hmm. not. I'm honestly, I can't say anything like what they need to do better. I just know Anthony Davis is a star, mm -hmm. and Rondo has been playing a really good playoff basketball. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what they could do in the off season. It's just that hard. It's hard when you have to face Golden State. So like, just face Golden State in general and your in your side of the playoffs like, <laughs> yeah. there's no way like there's nothing that you can do in the off season that can really impact and then when you meet them again have a chance against them so it's yeah. like 
they're, they're in a tough situation, just like how Raptors are in a tough situation with Cleveland. True. So. True. Uh, how about the, uh, the one that just ended recently, the Boston Philly series? What did you guys series. see? What did you guys notice between the matchups? Were you guys surprised in terms of what result came in? <laughs> like that Boston was able to come through without their two of their best players? Mm -hmm. It is, it's, it's scary, sorry. Uh, it's scary to see that the, uh, a rookie team, uh, technically a rookie team from Boston, is beating out another technically rookie team for Philly just without exactly their two best players. So it just shows a testament to what not only the players of Boston, but what Brad Stevens as a coach and his coaching staff sure. can do to influence his players to play at a high level without their best two stars. Mm -hmm. I'm sad that Philly didn't make it Eastern Conference Finals. I wanted them to. I think they have... You were the favorite after all I that. I think they hype. still have a bright yeah. future because this is just, um, a, this is still part of the process, as, as you said. Last year, they're only about, they only won, what, around 30 games. This year, they won about f almost 52. 50. 52. So that's a big gap, and you never know. They, they, Mark, Mark Fultz has been playing as well. So what if, you, if, what if Mark Fultz comes in and he's a top shooter in that team? So they have a bright future Philly, and, and I do believe that Philly is going to come back to the playoffs, make a deep run again, uh, hopefully despite if Boston has that two best players, you know, Kyrie Irving, Gordon Hayward, so. True, and then Philly going in the off season, they'll have the cap space to make a to big, sign big, a big, big move. I don't yeah. know what's gonna happen, Paul George maybe? They're well capped, they're well, Ooh, they're well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure. But uh, Boston is, is built for a dynasty too. I think they're, if Warriors are a dynasty in the West, I think Boston is the dynasty in the East just because of how, how well they prepare themselves, draft pick wise and cap space wise they got Horford on a really good deal mm -hmm. they have three young players that ne people didn't know it was going to be this good Terry Rozier came you know blossom Jason Tatum I, I, he was my pick for from my rookie of the year mm -hmm. before even like when, uh, when I said that if Gordon Hayward didn't have an injury if Gordon Hayward wasn't signed by them and they drafted Tatum I, he was my pick and then look at how good he's been now he's yeah. he's just been so good for them Jalen Brown has been <laughs> crazy uh, nobody. He was a third pick. Everybody was expecting him to kind of have that this sophomore kind of season, but nobody knew that Brad Stevens was able to get this much out of such young players. And it's good to see them mm -hmm. success, not succeed, not just in the playoffs, but just in terms of the long run. What are you going to see? They're only going to get better when they yeah. get Kyrie and and Gordon Hayward, uh, Gordon Hayward back. For sure, yeah. it's going to be exciting. And lastly, let's go with the Utah and and Houston matchup. We knew that Houston was going to come out of it. I just want to hear what you guys have thought about Donovan Mitchell in terms of how he carried the Jazz past the you know the OK three, and now had a win against the Rockets too before they gave down three one. Yeah, yeah Donovan Mitchell did his best. Uh, he's rookie of the year for sure uh, in my books. He did his best, especially without Ricky Rubio um, on the sideline. They were a phenomenal team. Uh, Utah, bright future as well. Uh, what stands out to me is Houston. CP3 is his first time heading to a conference final. Congratulations to him. It's just another stepping stone for, um, for another, you know, award for his career. You know, hopefully he can get that ring one day. But um, it's just, you know, another Hall of Fame uh, step to his career in CP3. So it, it was a great series. Utah has a great match, um, bright future. And Houston, it's going to be a great series for against, you know, we'll talk about that after Golden, Golden State Warriors. State. Yeah, I, lo I love Donovan Mitchell. All the highlights that he de like he did in the series, from mm -hmm. like putback slams to slamming, way better than Harden's foul making <laughs> ability. 